This viscast is about oscillatory motion. Please pause the video now and read through the question carefully. The question is asking us to identify the frequency of oscillation for the mass given in the diagram. The mass is connected to two springs which have the same spring constant and the mass is oscillating on a floor which is frictionless. So the coefficient of friction is zero. If the mass is perturbed from the equilibrium position, it just oscillates backwards and forwards in simple harmonic motion, which is undamped. To look at this question a bit further, what I'd like to do is redraw the diagram so that my mass has been perturbed from that equilibrium position that it's in. That means that the spring on the left hand side has been compressed and the spring on the right hand side has been extended. Both of these springs will exert a force on the mass and the sum of those forces will be my net force and that will have to equal the mass times the acceleration of my object. This is just Newton's second law. So what I'm going to do is to identify those two forces and sum them up. Let's say that the first force is from the left hand spring, we'll call that force 1, and the second force is from the right hand spring, we'll call that force 2. And in my perturbed diagram, I've moved a distance away from the equilibrium position, which I will call minus x. So I'm taking x being positive going to the right. So first of all, let's remind ourselves with a free body diagram what's going on there. I've got my mass, so which direction is force 1 acting? So force 1 is from the compressed spring, it's going to be a restoring force which tries to push the mass back to the equilibrium position. So I can say that there's a force F1 which is a pushing force acting to the right. The force F1 is going to be given by my Hooke's law which is minus k times the displacement. So that's x final minus x initial. On my diagram here, I've said that the x coordinate increases to the right and that equilibrium position was at zero. That means that my restoring force is given by minus k. My final position is minus x minus my initial position, which is zero. So I've got a negative times a negative, which is a positive kx. So the magnitude of the force is kx and it's in the positive direction which is to the right which is consistent with my diagram down here. Let's have a look at the force from the extended spring. Once again the extended spring is going to try and pull the mass back to the equilibrium position. So that force F2 acts to the right the force F2, once again given by Hooke's law, minus k times the displacement, x final minus x initial. In this case, I've got minus k times, once again, the final position is to the left, it's negative x minus 0. It's also going to have the magnitude of kx and be positive, acting to the right, which is again consistent with my diagram down here. If I'd drawn my diagram here such that the mass was to the right of the equilibrium position, I'd find that both F1 and F2 would be restoring forces acting to the left. So finally, what we can do now is add the uh, forces together. So the sum of the forces is going to be equal to 2 times k times x. That's the left hand side of my Newton's second law. And that must be equal to the mass times the acceleration, which I'm going to write as d squared x dt squared. So what I can recognize here is we've got a restoring force which is proportional to x. So it's linearly proportional to x. There's not x squared there, it's just x. The proportionality constant happens to be 2 times k. But since that restoring force is linearly proportional to x, that means that the solution for x must be a simple harmonic motion. Just to remind you, if we had a single spring of spring constant k, then my differential equation for simple harmonic motion would be kx is equal to m times d squared x dt squared 
and we know that the solution for this differential equation is simple harmonic motion where my mass would oscillate with an angular frequency given by the square root of k over m. So the angular frequency is the square root of the number which is in front of the x here divided by the number which is in front of the acceleration. So by analogy the solution for this differential equation will also oscillate with an angular frequency however it now oscillates with an angular frequency given by the square root of 2k divided by m. So all I've done is just replaced the number in front of the x with 2k rather than k here. Or if you'd like to think about it, it's like I've replaced that single spring by a spring with a spring constant which is twice as stiff. It's another way of thinking about it. We want to solve for that uh, frequency of oscillation so remembering the frequency in hertz is given by omega divided by 2 pi. So that's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 2 times 7580 divided by 0 0.295. And that's equal to, on my calculator, about 36 hertz as a frequency. Just to assess this, what we can learn from this problem here is that if I have two springs acting on my mass here, it looks like the effective spring constant has just been given by k1 plus k2. So if I was to say that this spring constant was k1, this one was k2, if they were different, then the effective spring constant is just the sum. Here those two spring constants are the same, so k plus k is 2k. Now, looking at this you might think well those two springs how do we describe how they're acting on the mass they both are, they both exert a force on the mass in the same direction what I'd like to say is it doesn't matter whether you've got a spring either side of the mass or you could have a spring acting on both sides of the mass that might be an easy thing to look at in this case if I extend my spring to the right both springs are going to pull across to the left so we call this springs in parallel so when springs act in parallel, we just add the spring constants.